how climbing has changed. If you've got any questions, I'll, I'll try and answer them. No questions. <laughs> Wait a minute. No, 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 no. You're not going to get off that easy. Come on. <laughs> Rick, did you have something you wanted to say? Well, what started you getting, uh, what got you into climbing? Well, I think Herb and I climbed out of our cribs and just kept going. <laughs> <laughs> so we didn't learn anything about ropes for climbing until we started climbing at, at Carter Rock. And uh, that happened. Herb came to Washington, D.C. on December 7, 19. Uh, 7th, 1941, along with the war, to be to work for the Navy Department. He was an electrical engineer, but he soon got over that and learned to be a bum. We wanted, I had an, an aunt who, who had a section of the trail, a, a PATC trail, that she kept care of. And we asked her, and she suggested we wanted to go climbing, and she suggested Harold Stimson, Stimmy. In those days, climbers were a different breed from what they are today. They were, well, her was kind of typical. He towered above me by about two inches. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> he, they, these people were, a lot of them, at the Bureau of Standards. They were scientists, bookworms, and uh, they wanted something to do that was physical, outdoors. And they long on to climbing. They didn't train, they just went out and climbed whatever they could get up. And uh, I always describe Herb as puny like a pair of pliers. Because <laughs> he, he, he wasn't very big. But, and that came in handy in caving, too. Caving is a wonderful sport for little people. And you, a little climber can just out-climb a, a big climber any day of the week. And I remember we were in with, with taking these big, beefy football types, and we grouped and uh, through a little tight spot. And this guy said, she just shot right through there. And they'd have so much trouble because there's just so much more of them. <laughs> and caves don't have that in mind when they are created. Um, I'm going to need a, a mic, but I'm going to need to play the guitar, too. Uh, can, I can hold it for you. OK. What do you suggest? Uh, easier if this mic cord isn't that long, so okay. it might be easier if you're on the side of the table, too. This just won't reach over there, I'm afraid. Or I can hold this door. It's still working. Got that? was a bell, cold and gray. Sought out each and every cave. Stout of heart. Slim of chest, he could slither with the best. Scale the domes and plumb the pits, he would never call it quits. But he had one quality the group could not abide. When cavers saw him coming, they'd run away and hide. He made such a racket when he opened up his mouth that the geese would fly north. The ducks would fly south. <laughs> <laughs> the light. 
tell it. The yodel jumped up and he split the air. He let out his yodel and it echoed off the walls. They used it like radar to guide them through the walls. Back through the labyrinth, our hero led the way and he yodeled them back to the welcome light of day.